Hey folks, good to see you again. Today I'm going to go over a new feature inside SEO GPT with you called Topical Authority. And this tool is really neat. I've heard a lot of people ask about it. And so today I'm going to talk specifically about this new feature inside SEO GPT. If you're not familiar with SEO GPT, just go to seovendor.co slash SEO GPT and you'll find out more information about how to use this free tool. This tool that's provided by our company is completely free. We don't charge, we don't ask you for anything, we don't sell you information or any of that stuff. All you do is you go to sign in, which I'm gonna do right now, and then just log in with your login information. So it's gonna take you to the over overview page. And then from there to get to Topical Authority, what you do is you click on SEO GBT and you're gonna find topical authority down here and all you have to do is just click into it and you can start using it actually and it's going to be really neat because it just basically creates a whole mapping for you which we're going to go over in, in a minute before we get into using this tool we have to first understand why topical authority is important and it has to do with something google calls eeat now if you're not familiar with what eeat is what you can do is you can go to our website click the magnifying glass and just look for E-E-A-T. That's it. Type that in and then go to this one called what does EEAT mean for SEO and why it is important. So once you go to that, we're not going to get into um, knee deep into EAT, but just understand what, what it means. It stands for experience, expertise, authoritativeness, trustworthiness. So with these factors, what it does is establishes a map for how you should write content for your website. Let's look at it this way. In order for you to rank for a keyword these days in Google, you got to have a lot of good high quality content. And But the problem is, how do you know what to write about? Let's go through an example of what this looks like without topical authority today. So I have set here one particular example just to dig a little bit deeper is that um, if we look at some of the questions that people have asked, I saw that there was a question about um, specifically about training. So I did a search for training a German Shepherd. And when we looked at that, you can see that there are still, it's still Google categorizes it under how to train. But once you look underneath that, then you're going to get a sense for the types of sites that are coming up are now going to be a lot more specifically dog training related sites um, or sites that have an expertise in that area and so with that particular niche we can actually garner much more specific content and this is this is a case so let's take a look and see what difference that makes if we were to use the different tools inside SEO GBT for creating topics and titles. So let's say for example if you were you had a web page and you were you have a web page about training a German Shepherd. We're going to use that to create several different variations again and we're going to tell it to write three different ones. And again while I would suggest that that you put in a target URL and possibly a brand as well to make the the um, the title a little bit more significant, you can actually just get away with just putting in just the keyword alone just to kind of see what results we get. Um, right now we're just doing this for just demo demonstration purposes anyways. So you can see the types of titles that it can come up with. Now keep in mind this is assuming that you're doing this for one page or perhaps even a blog article that you want to create and you want to see what kind of title you can give it. But it, if you are really creating a blog, what you should do is you should come down over to SEO content and then you can still put in that same phrase or keyword training a German Shepherd. Use topics instead of titles. You can have it write three different topics for you, which might be a better alternative for creating uh, a single blog article. Now keep in mind this still goes back to creating a single blog article, not multiple blog articles. And you can see what kind of of topics that it's come up with um, and you can have it to tell it to write it again and you can have different variations and and if you write if you do this enough times you you'll probably even come across topics that you can 
then use for even multiple articles. But again, this is not a complete topical map. And what you want to do is if you want to complete your topical map means give this keyword on your site the authority it needs to rank well in Google by covering the topic in its entirety or as close to entirety as possible, then I suggest using topical authority. And so let's take a look at training a German Shepherd using uh, topical authority and let's look at the difference. Okay, there we are. So it's come up with 30 different optimized article titles for us. You can see it's got the keyword next to it. It's also provided a recommended post URL. This is something that we didn't um, kind of get into until now is that a website or a platform where it doesn't automatically optimize the URL for you. Um, you can follow the suggestion that it's provided. There's also a recommended word length that you can use to follow and also a publishing schedule that you can use to follow as well to get a good sense for if you have this keyword and you want it to cover the topical authority for that particular keyword, you'll get a good understanding of how much time it's going to take for you to complete it all, assuming that you're not just going to uh, post all the content onto your website all at once. Uh, so you could use this as a schedule, as sort of a writing schedule to then um, either have your writer's writer or write the content yourself. And so you have a particular program here that you can follow. And um, this information is saved, so completed topical maps do end up underneath here. Um, you can remove them if you don't need them, but they are there if you wanted to go back and reference what was perhaps on which day I have which plan or which article I'm going to write next. The information is retained there for you until you're ready to remove that information. So these topics, again, kind of going back to the way that they're written is designed so that there's, there's topical coverage, but there's also difference in that coverage so that you cover as much of this topic as possible. Now, the one thing that topical authority doesn't get into um, as far as the tool goes, the actual content or the subtopics that are going to then have to go underneath each one of these subjects. This is something that the topical authority tool does not cover, but it is something that is covered inside SEO GPT-2, which is coming soon. So I hope you enjoy this brief overview of how to best utilize this tool and especially how to use it in comparison to the SEO GPT web page optimizations and SEO content optimizations. If you like hearing more about how you can use AI to help enhance your SEO, click the subscribe button below and follow us. If you have any kind of feedback for topical authority or how you use this tool, leave it in the comments below. Thank you for taking your time to watch this video today.